Hey, if you'd like to support the production of more Move University video tutorials, then please visit the support move section on moveuniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. So in this video, we're going to continue our discussion of the LDL receptor and how it's important in hypercholesterolemia and atherosclerosis. So let's define atherosclerosis first. It's the thickening, it's the thickening of an artery's wall due to plaque buildup. Plaque buildup. So normally, uh, an artery looks like this. We've got um, this little tube basically that blood can flow right through and eventually get to uh, tissues that line the capillaries. Okay, So blood of course carries oxygen and a bunch of nutrients to these tissues. Okay, So this is what normally happens. We have the blood going through. Um, this is a normal artery. Now what can happen is in an atherosclerotic artery athero sclerosis. We could basically have a plaque built up in the wall of the artery. So this here is a plaque. And this plaque, as you can see here, it basically cuts off the blood's ability to flow through the tube that is the artery. So um, we got an obstruction of blood flow here. So these plaques form due to high uh, cholesterol concentrations and uh, LDL concentrations, LDL levels, and that is called hypercholesterolemia. Hypercholesterolemia. Let's break down that word here. Hyper means too much, right? Too much. Cholesterol obviously is referring to cholesterol and LDL, so C and LDL. And the emia refers to the blood. So this is basically too much cholesterol and LDL cholesterol uh, in the blood. Okay, that's what hypercholesterolemia is. And of course these plaques build up because of oxidized LDL being consumed by macrophages to form foam cells and these foam cells build up in the wall of the artery that get this plaque here. Okay, so that's something that we talked about previously. So the question, you know, so this, so this is bad, right? And the answer is yes. Tissues need oxygen from blood as well as other nutrients. So if these tissues do not get that oxygenated blood, what can happen is this thing called an infarction. Infarction. Which is basically tissue death due to no oxygen. Okay. So you might have heard the term myocardial infarction, which is base, uh, more commonly known as a heart attack. What that basically is, is that there are arteries that line your heart that supply your heart with oxygen your heart muscles with um, with with oxygen as well as other nutrients so those those arteries are called the coronary arteries and those arteries when they supply your heart this is a very simple drawing here um, but the idea is that if these these arteries kind of get um, obstructed for their blood flow what can happen is that the tissues that are that these blood vessels are supplying um, might not get enough oxygen uh, and other nutrients. And if they don't get enough oxygen, they could die. And if, they, if your heart muscles die, that's obviously really, really bad because your heart uh, pumps blood through your entire body. And if it can't do that, then your tissues won't get oxygen or any of the nutrients and you, you could die from a heart attack. Um, so that's what a myocardial infarction is. So this is obviously something that's very, very serious. Um, this can also happen in your brain. And that'll be called a, a cerebral infarction, uh, otherwise known as a brain attack, but more commonly known as a stroke. So uh, both of these cases are obviously very bad, and you've probably already heard of them, but now you kind of know what's going on here. A cerebral infarction basically would happen. Same idea, right? If there are blood vessels that that are in your brain that supply your your brain tissues with with oxygen, uh, if they can't get oxygen to those tissues, those tissues can die, and that can lead to a stroke. So Obviously, this is not something that's pleasant. Okay, now um, there's also a specific type of hypercholesterolemia called familial hypercholesterolemia, or FH, uh, and it's a genetic disorder characterized by high LDL concentrations in the blood. Okay, so familial. What does that mean? Family, genetic. So how? Well, what's going on there? What that, what that basically means, if it's genetic, is that there's a problem with a gene product. Right, that might seem a little redundant, um, but gene products are proteins, right? 
So something's wrong with a particular protein that causes familial hypercholesterolemia, that causes this high cholesterol in the blood. In this case, that specific protein that is, uh, that is the problem is the LDL receptor. So two things basically can be the case. Uh, either there's no LDL receptor um, being made, so there's no LDL receptor protein synthesis at all, or there's too few functional LDL receptors. In either case, people with f familial hypercholesterolemia don't have in either they don't have enough of this receptor to take up LDL into the uh, into their cells. Um, so basically, the 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 take home point simply is that in familial hypercholesterolemia, LDL is not being taken up by cells. So what ends up happening is that the LDL stays in the blood. So if it stays in the blood, we have a high. No, I meant to put high. There's a high concentration of LDL in the blood, which of course we know is damaging, right? Because it can form the oxidized LDL, form cells, and so on and so forth. So the question is, how is this treated? Well, if an individual has no LDL receptors at all, and they're a homozygote for this trait, um, they need a new liver. And so, in that case, transplants are necessary. Okay. But if there's just less LDL receptor, which means just not enough, in that case of a heterozygote, what can happen is that um, they would want to decrease the amount of cholesterol in the cells in the cells so as to increase uptake of cholesterol from the blood right so basically the idea here is to decrease the amount of cholesterol in the cells so that the cells can in fact take up a uh, cholesterol from the blood right and specifically uh, LDL cholesterol so there are drugs that are called statins, which we mentioned before. Statins inhibit HMG-CoA reductase, which we mentioned, of course, was the committed step in cholesterol synthesis. So the idea here is that um, if, if we have this committed step of cholesterol synthesis inhibited, there will be less cholesterol in the cells, which would allow an increase in the uptake of cholesterol from the blood into the cells. This is important because the receptors, the LDL receptors, are synthesized on a uh, need basis, right? So if there's a lower cholesterol concentration in the cell and that is sensed, what can happen is that that means we're going to have more uptake of the cholesterol because we'll have more receptors made, right? And what that'll do is that if we're taking cholesterol into the cell, um, there's going to have we're going to have less cholesterol in the blood, less LDL in the blood. Okay, so th okay, so that means less LDL in the blood. And if there's less LDL in the blood, that means less a lower probability of oxidized LDLs forming and being taken up by macrophages. And if there's less of those um, being taken up, we're going to have less foam cells forming which means less plaques would form, which means we'd have less atherosclerosis and less cardiovascular disease. So that's the idea there. Hopefully you followed that train of thought there. Okay. Um, so that's how, that's why statins are so important in this treatment. Um, lifestyle changes are also considered sometimes. Um, I mean, with individuals who have a genetic disorder, they have to sometimes have to be extra careful about their diet and exercise. Um, but really, everyone is always encouraged to diet and exercise because um, those are just healthy things to do. Um, and um, yeah, so I hope that video makes sense. And again, to be clear, none of this is to be taken as medical advice. I am not a healthcare professional. If you genuinely have any concerns or questions about your health, definitely consult your physician. Anyway, I hope that video was helpful in looking at this from an academic perspective. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to share the video with anyone who you think might find it helpful. Thanks and happy studying.